The next bill on the calendar for today is House File 2774. The clerk will report the bill. House file number 2774, number two on the calendar for the day, an act relating to employment, the third engrossment. I recognize the author of the bill, the member from Hennepin, Representative Greenman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. This bill rests on the simple premise that all Minnesotans deserve to be safe and secure at work. It protects warehouse workers by updating worker safety standards with common sense notice and transparency requirements, giving workers the information and power they need to keep themselves and their workers safe. Work shouldn't hurt, but for Minnesotans at Amazon's warehouse, warehouses, it does. These workers, some of whom are in the gallery, are telling us they're being forced to work at a grueling and relentless pace. They talk about a culture of fear and anxiety, about working under intense ec electronic surveillance that tracks and monitors their daily moves. We hear from workers like Safiyo Muhammad, who worked at an Amazon fulfillment center in Shakopee, and described the feeling of pressure, pressure, and describes the pressure of her duties as, be, as if she was being forced to perform like a robot. As a stower, Ms. Mohammed picked, she scanned, she stored hundreds of objects of all sizes and weights an hour. To keep up with the actual robots that delivered the items, she didn't take bathroom breaks, she didn't take water breaks or stretch. She feared falling behind, and she always had the threat of discipline and firing um, hanging over her. She had good reason to fear. After three weeks, everyone she started with was either injured or fired. She was the only person left. These are the stories we heard over and over again. Workers pushing themselves to the brink to meet quotas and time off task measures. Time off task measures that were constantly changing and often not disclosed. Workers skipping the rest breaks, the bathroom breaks, and breaks to pray in order for fear of being written up. And if they can't keep up with these excessively fast pace, they're penalized or fired. Workers talked about it as feeling like they were racing against a machine with quotas set by algorithms that treat them like robots, not like human beings. Listening to these workers and then looking at the data paints an alarming picture, an alarming picture that requires us to act. At Amazon Workhouses in Minnesota, one in every nine workers are injured on the job. That's four times higher than workers in private industry and twice as high as workers in other warehouses. These are injuries, these are preventable injuries, musculoskeletal injuries, the kind from twisting and turning and lifting that stick with you for a lifetime. These injury rates are attributable to how Amazon works and manages their workers in their warehouses, enforcing an excessively rapid pace of work through a system of surveillance and discipline that Amazon has pioneered. It doesn't have to be this way. It shouldn't be this way. And in fact, for many workers in other warehouses, it isn't this way. We also heard from workers that talked about transfer, transparent performance standards designed by industrial professionals that with the health and the safety of human bodies in mind. But for companies like Amazon that put profits over their people, the human cost of these dangerous, dangerous management practices are immense. Their model uses and discards workers at an alarming rate with little regard for their health, their safety, or the impact it's having on all of our communities. Minnesota worker safety standards have not kept up with the high tech and cutting edge model and the harm it causes to workers. Minnesota OSHA standards can only enforce the standards that exist, and we don't have standards to cover practices like this. And that's why we need this bill. It creates a simple notice standard that requires large warehouse companies, warehouses over 250 workers, to notify their workers of any quotas they're expected to meet. And it gives workers the rights to access their own personal performance data that's being tracked by the company. It ensures that any quota or performance standard won't get in the way and can't interfere with that worker's rights to take a meal break or a lunch break or prayer break. 
To ensure that companies comply with this notice, it gives workers the rights to enforce their rights under this provision, and it gives the Department of Labor and Industry the ability to enforce the provisions and to open up an investigation into any large company with injury rates higher than 30 percent the average for warehouses. It's a simple, straightforward policy to address a big worker safety problem to protect Amazon workers now and ensure that it is not spreading to other warehouses and other industries and injuring more Minnesotans. So with that, members, I would ask you uh, to, to vote for this bill. If you were in committee, um, you heard lots of workers, and we have workers up in the gallery, many of whom have been working with me and others on this policy. We need, we need uh, policy that responds to this problem, um, and that's what this bill does. So, workers I'd, or members, I'd ask for your support. Thank you. There are no amendments at the desk. The clerk will give the bill its third reading. <clears throat> third reading, House Hall Number 2774. Third reading. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Gomez. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I want to say first, thank you so much to the Amazon workers who are here today and anybody listening. We appreciate you. We know it's not easy what you have done to stand up as an individual worker against one of the biggest corporations in the world with one of the wealthiest people in the world at its, at its helm is not an easy task. And we thank you. We admire you. We admire your courage. And thank you for joining us today. So I'm rising today to speak to an issue that is very important to me and I know is important to a lot of people on both sides of the aisle in this body. Um, the issue of surveillance and personal freedom. I'm carrying um, House File 1196 that would ban facial recognition technology and I want to thank my bipartisan co-authors um, who have signed on to, that, to this important um, effort. Um, when we think about surveillance, I think we have like visions of the wire, right? So some people involved in a criminal enterprise, law enforcement has done a very diligent job of investigating them. They go in front of a judge, the judge signs off, and then, you know, they, um, the, <coughs> excuse me, the, the, the police then can like listen in on, on telephone conversations that happen. But that's just no longer the reality that we live in. It's not just Stringer Bell and Avon Barksdale or whoever who are subject to these kind of practices. The federal government engages in warrantless wiretapping of its citizens. We know this. Facial recognition technology is used extensively by law enforcement and corporations. And Minnesota, in fact, is uh, an epicenter, a worldwide hub of surveillance due to a public-private partnership with Target Corporation. We have protections in this country from unreasonable search and seizure by the government guaranteed to us under the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. All of the constitutional rights that we hold dear, free speech, free association, are connected to the reasonable expectation of privacy. The right of the people to be secure in our persons is how, it's, how it says it in the, in the Bill of Rights. But who could have anticipated that we'd be where we are, where we have giant multinational corporations tracking our every move as consumers and especially as workers, that we would have big tech corporations constructing a high tech dystopian surveillance system. And they may just be using it on their workers now, the most alarming parts. But this is a slippery slope. Issues of, of, of privacy and, and personal freedom like this are a slippery slope, and we have to be vigilant in protecting these rights. Amazon's market capitalization is more than $1.6 trillion. So if that market cap was the GDP of a nation, They'd be like the 10th biggest country in the world, between like Brazil and Canada. Um, 
So just, I'm, I'm just imagining, I've been imagining like going to work, being, being a worker in Amazon's warehouse. And you go to work and you check in, you have to leave all your belongings in the break room. Um, you can bring a water bottle and a clear pouch with cash with you, but other than that, everything has to stay um, far away. Um, as you move through your day, an extensive network of cameras and the item scanner that you use to kind of track your work tracks your every move. When you go to eat lunch, you're being watched. When you go to the bathroom, you're being watched on your way there. If you go have a smoke break, you're being watched. So Amazon is not a government. But in our current climate, giant corporations have taken on quasi-state qualities. And we have to be as vigilant about their surveillance and about their invasions of our privacy as we are about those that are perpetrated by the state. This is a, an easy green vote today. The question before us today is simple, and it's one that working people have asked of people sitting in our positions over and over over the years. People in these walls. Which side are you on? Are you on the side of Minnesota workers? Or are you on the side of uh, Jeff Bezos and his buddies who want to blast off into outer space while people in our communities are trying to pay their bills, while people in our communities are sleeping on the streets? Are you for the little guy or are you for a giant multinational conglomerate corporation run by a billionaire who needs to deconstruct a bridge in Rotterdam to make his super yacht be able to fit through it? This is very simple. A red vote on this bill is a vote for Bezos and his friends. A red vote on this bill is a vote against Minnesota workers. And it should be very, very easy. Thank you. I recognize the member for Meeker, Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And members, uh, would Representative Greenman yield for a question, please? She will yield, Representative Erdahl. Thank you. Uh, I was under the impression that uh, the Department of Labor and Industry has rules and regulations to deal with the types of abuses that you've cited. Uh, you mentioned Dolly. Uh, have you worked with them as to what more is needed to address your concerns? The member from Hennepin, Representative Greenman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, and thank you, uh, Representative Erdahl, for the question. Um, yes, I've been working uh, pretty closely with, with Dolly. The thing is about our standards is you have to have a standard in order to enforce it. And right now, we don't have a standard that requires uh, companies to tell workers what their expectations are if they can be disciplined for them. We don't have a standard that says a quota, you can be fired for a quota, uh, that you've never been told about, it can be opaque. So that's why we need, this is a worker standard, uh, worker safety standard, like in the past when we've seen new problems created by new technology and new innovation, uh, we've had standards uh, that have come in and that's why uh, we need this today. Thank you. Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you for the clarification. The member from Kutiching, Representative Eklund. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As lawmakers, we have a fundamental responsibility to protect workers on the job. Over the years, workplaces and working conditions have changed. Workplace settings in 1922 weren't the same as 1822. And in 2022, workplace uh, settings are significant, significantly different than 1922. As workplaces evolve, so, do, so too must our worker protection laws. Right now, th these laws are simply inadequate to address situations like those we've heard about over and over again at Amazon. 
This bill will strengthen Minnesota OSHA's ability to ensure warehouses are keeping workers safe, requiring companies to disclose any quotas or work speeds that workers will, have, will be held to, and to give workers access to data that affects them. Beyond just empowering OSHA, though, this bill truly empowers workers. It guarantees other transparency, requiring monthly safety meetings so that employees and employers are regularly meeting to ensure safety on the job when there is a workplace injury. Injury rates are higher than 30% of the average of other warehouses. We've seen Amazon expand its economic footprint across the country. We argue about whether this itself is good or bad, but we simply can't deny the harm workers at Minnesota facilities in Minnesota face. Their rigid quota system breaks employees down to the brink, making them fearful to even use the restroom because of how it might affect their workforce performance evaluation. The grueling physical demands in these warehouses are, are well do documented with workers feeling like they are simply must continue on at unreasonable pace and at all costs. While we've heard many stories directly from the workers, this just isn't anecdotal. Workers at Mi Amazon's Minnesota warehouses are getting injured at more than double the rate of non-Amazon warehouses and more than four times the rate for all private industry in the state of Minnesota. Members, this is unacceptable. Without meaningful guardrails, rigid workforce quota systems, a threat to worker safety, it's no secret Amazon's work workplace record is the impetus for this bill. But it's bigger than just one company. We need to quickly take this action because these pra practices, before these practices spread to other businesses, that may seek to copy Amazon's approach. Members, going to work should not hurt. Thank you, Representative Greenman, for the, her thoughtful approach to get this bill to the floor today that will give DLI important tools to protect worker safety in a growing industry. I also want to thank the workers who have stepped forward. Thank you to share their stories and ideas for how we can ensure the safe that they can be safe and successful on the job. I'll repeat, going to work and coming home injured should not happen in the state of Minnesota. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I recognize the member from Polk, Representative Keel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would uh, Representative uh, Greenman yield for a question? She will yield, Representative Keel. Representative Greenman, um, I'm wondering, did you talk to any of the agricultural businesses in Minnesota to ask how this would affect them? The member from Hennepin, Representative Greenman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I talked to the retailers and many other folks who uh, work in and, uh, and represent uh, warehouses, which is what this bill pertains to. Thank you. Representative Keel. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, members, that's not correct. Agricultural has huge storehouses, and we put all kinds of product in Minnesota in storehouses. Not all of them are over 250 members in those businesses, but um, we have a time restraint. Those are dangerous jobs. People get hurt. I think a young man was just burnt by hot water this year and OSHA standards are followed. He was uh, taken care of. I know he was life lighted down here to the cities and um, is back on the job, doing well. Fundraisers were had for him, as well as the company taking care of him. But that is just one thing that happens. And agriculture is one of the most dangerous jobs in Minnesota. But there's all kinds of standards that are already required by this federal government as well as the state. And we try to make sure that people don't take risk. Um, I have a few farmers that forget to put that shield on the PTO shaft or those types of things and, and they can get hurt um, doing that or mistakenly didn't shut their machine off, but that's a smaller group of people so you wouldn't deal with that in this. In, in this. But, 
I would say with this bill, um, we can talk about uh, DigiKey. DigiKey is well over 3,000 employees. It is, uh, I don't, I've never been to Amazon, so I have no idea what it looks like. But I have been to DigiKey. Very automated, um, a wonderful place to work. Not everybody's happy there, I will admit that. But there is a lot of opportunity in that building to take care of yourself. They even have a medical uh, stop that you can check if you're not feeling well or have some kind of uh, pulled muscle or something so that they need to assess it and send you off to a, uh, uh, a doctor or a review. But it is a wonderful company that takes care of their employees. I believe there's a couple of others in, uh, in District 1A that also do the same thing and, and uh, follow the rules that are, are required by Minnesota and the federal government. OSHA is very much involved. In, uh, and when we think about agricultural products, think about the large grain storage. All of those are affected by this uh, language also general storage for grain, corn, and it's dangerous. Folks, it's dangerous. If you don't follow the rules, unfortunately, we saw this the last year, few people died. Somebody just went over the grain bin and um, there was methane gas poisoning that came out of the, the bin, and unfortunately, two family members died. One because they got the gas, uh, breathed in the gas and were dead, and their family member went to help them and they died because they didn't realize the danger. So um, while it's really important that we make sure workers are, are safe, um, we do have standards. And I find it interesting that we are talking about one business when we have multiple businesses in Minnesota that are large, and need to follow those rules also. So um, as I mentioned, uh, things like DigiKey do automation. Um, they are the a hugely large uh, company up in Thief River Falls. And um, I know they take care of their, their workers. They have lunch rooms, they have, I've been there, I've talked to people. Um, so not every business in Minnesota mistreats their employees. And um, we are gonna have some problems but we should never accept them. And I believe that between uh, Dolly, which already has the uh, recommendations, and OSHA, which has standards already required of us, that we need to look to those to uh, make Amazon accountable in Minnesota rather than pass this bill that would really become difficult for all of our other businesses that are following the rules, that are taking care of their people, and making sure that um, citizens, workers, are doing, uh, are safe when they're working. We don't want to lose people. It's awful. It's usually a family member, and um, you know, and and our friends and neighbors. So it's really, um, like I said, it, I'll reiterate: we need to follow the standards that are there already. Thank you. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Hassan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker and members, I rise today in support of House File 2774. It's no surprise that I'm standing on behalf of workers and worker safety. Many of these workers live in my district and I hear their concerns every day. As Amazon's profits soar through the roof, more and more poor immigrants get injured trying to meet the impossible demands this company puts on its workers. I want to thank Robert Greenman for carrying this bill and giving this issue a voice. I also want to thank all the courageous workers who have tirelessly showed up every day and are here today to demand a simple respect and a safe working conditions. Many of the um, Amazon um, warehouse workers are immigrants. These immigrants cross borders of many countries to get to America and chase that American dream all of us want to live in. Just to be treated as subhuman and denied all rights as workers is disheartening. These are everyday Minnesotans who all they want to do is to provide for their families. We should all be concerned about worker safety and as leaders of this great state, it's our responsibility to protect every uh, workers in every company. Here are some uh, facts. Uh, 
Black and East African workers in Amazon make less than white workers. About one in three Amazon workers in Shakopee Warehouse is Black, including many East African immigrants. In terms of average monthly earnings, Black warehouse workers there make 37% less than white workers at those warehouses. In 2020, <clears throat> no Minnesota in, uh, industry had a higher injury rate than the rate at the Shakopee Amazon Fulfillment Center. Think about that. Jobs are not also stable and long-term. Turnover rate at the Shakopee Amazon facilities are much higher than those at any other Amazon warehouses, with many workers quitting or being fired. In addition, Amazon denies full-time permanent employees uh, employee status to a significant portion of its workforce, including those who are hired as a seasonal or through a staffing agent. I want to share a story about <clears throat> from someone who lives in my district. It's an elder, uh, an older gentleman. Let's just call him Mr. Ali. Mr. Ali immigrated from Somalia, has lived in Minnesota many years. Uh, the first time that Amazon has opened its doors, he decided to look for a job there. Mr. Ali knows my father, so every time he sees me, he talks about stories of my father and how he uh, worked with my father. Um, but Mr. Ali doesn't speak a whole lot of English, um, so he decided to get a job at Amazon. After working there for only a few months, he got injured. Um, he told me that he was denied to get medical um, attention. He was get, uh, denied um, even when he seeked unemployment. Amazon, um, you know, the company denied and said that he um, you know, abandoned his job even though he was injured. These are not, you know, random stories. This is a story that I hear all the time. Every time I talk to an Amazon worker, I hear the stories of how so-and-so got injured or so-and-so was fired or we can't keep up with the quota or uh, we're being pressured because of we were taking breaks. And uh, members, Ramadan is coming, um, I believe, in a few days. And um, every Ramadan I hear the complaints about people wanting to eat um, after, as you guys know, Ramadan, you have to fast from sunrise to sunset. People wanting to eat at sunset to take a break and eat because they have been fasting all day long and working. Um, these are issues that I constantly hear in my district. And it's not only Amazon. To think that this is only Amazon, yes, today we're talking about Amazon. But many of these, you know, major companies are abusing people who are new in this country or people who don't speak enough English or people who don't look like mainstream Minnesotans. So as we talk about today Amazon's issues, I also want to remind, you know, members that there are many production lines in this state that are also cutting corners and making sure that, you know, they save a penny while their, you know, employer, employees get hurt. Um, I want to encourage everybody to vote for Green because voting for this bill means that you're protecting workers. Voting for this bill means that you're making sure that big companies do not get away with cutting corners and saving pennies. And voting for this bill means you're choosing people over profit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members, and I hope that we can light up the board. I recognize the member from Carver, Representative Nash. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. When I first got here, I was uh, given a very good piece of advice by Chair Davids said, Jim, we don't do bills on just one subject for one company. That's not what we do. Members, I, I have heard you all talk about just one company, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. 
it, it almost sounds like it's my kids ordering Christmas presents during Christmas as we read whose packages are coming at the door. Um, we have a department to handle these things. We have OSHA to handle these things. And I guess I would wonder, uh, would Representative Greenman yield? She will yield, Representative Nash. Sorry to interrupt your snack. Uh, Representative, when was the last time that OSHA or Dolly came out to Amazon to inspect these things that, that uh, you're talking about and others have talked about in, uh, in their, their speeches? The member from Hennepin, Representative Greenman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Representative Nash. Uh, those investigations are confidential until closed. I will say that Amazon has only been in Minnesota for since 2016, um, and I believe that there have been a few, but I know that you're going to have to check with, with, with Dolly because until the investigations are closed, it's not public. Representative Nash. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, to me, uh, it sounds like Dolly and OSHA are maybe falling down on the, on the job that there should be some stricter uh, investigations or more frequency of these investigations. I, I certainly understand we want workers to be safe. We want them to not feel like they're being watched. But so early in my career, I worked as VP of sales for a technology company. I know, su surprise, Jim Nash and technology. But it, the technology was to drive warehouses to become more efficient. And I, I heard one of the comments that said, well, uh, we're, we are feeling like people are being treated by ro like robots. Well, one of the solutions to the labor issue is automated storage and retrieval, ASRS. And if we're looking to create pro these issues and bring these up, Amazon very well could just decide to go to a more automated warehouse, and then you have fewer jobs. So that's just something to tuck away. Now, beyond the Aldous Huxley dystopian description that we got of what's going on here, I think that there's something that's a little more veiled than that. We're, we're hearing about the collection of data. More data and more data and more data. Well, this is data collected about one company that's going to perhaps be used to create uh, effects at other companies in, uh, for some of, some of the people who are more on your side of the issue than mine. Uh, if you're trying to provide this data to other unions, I think that's going to drive a very interesting conversation. But I, I find this really kind of troubling. Going back to my Uncle Greg, as we call him, uh, piece of advice, we don't do bills just to solve a problem that we view with one company. And Representative Winkler, you can shake your head and disagree with me all you want, but I will disagree with you. And in as much as I have the floor, I'll just keep going with that. But narrow legislation, I think, is very narrow-minded in, in how you approach this. Now, you're going to collect and, and catch up a lot of other warehousing organizations with this, and I have friends that work at those. So I took some time and I asked them, tell me what you think about this. Showed them some of the language, and after they glazed over because they were reading a bill about what we do down here, and they got bored pretty fast, I explained to them what some of the ramifications are, and they said, well, Jim, this, this is going to harm us. It's going to slow things down for us, and they're not on board, and these are people who work in the warehouses. Now, I'm not going to say who they are because they don't need any extra scrutiny, but I just think that you're trying to solve a problem with one company as you perceive it. And again, no one has mentioned any other company. This is all Amazon. That's a very inelegant bill, in my opinion. You should have examples of other companies. We haven't heard one. We had Representative Keel talk about ag. Apparently that wasn't done either. So I think that if you're going to try to solve this problem, perhaps a little more scrutiny on the efforts of Dolly and OSHA. And I know that OSHA and, and other departments of labor take things very seriously because my wife is an industrial engineer and she worked for an insurance company and it was her job to go and look at a lot of the companies that their company insured to make sure that there were not workplace violations, exposures, uh, repetitive motion injuries and things like that. So she would come back and tell me on a fairly regular basis just how aggressive OSHA could be. It doesn't sound like that's going on here. So I would say, Representative Greenman, perhaps uh, all of us could come together and encourage the department and OSHA to do a better job rather than take a very narrow prescriptive approach with one company, write a bill apparently based on every, all the testimony that you all have given from your side about one company. 
I just think that there's a better approach. I think that you should, we should have, maybe if you want to have a press conference or 20, and talk about how much you need the department to do its job, and how much you need uh, OSHA to get out there and do their job. If, if the problems exist in the way that you say that they do, then I certainly think that that falls clearly under the purview of those two organizations, rather than draft a bill to go after one company. Because again, you, you haven't mentioned anybody else. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recognize the, remember, the member from Ramsey, Representative Lilly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and uh, uh, members. It is my experience, I've been here a couple seasons and uh, We've done individual things. Um, maybe it's not ideal, but we've done some. Um, this bill, I, I don't usually get up on these things, but it's 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 kind of an, uh, relevant to the life I live when I'm not here. But uh, this bill is necessary because of uh, the, there just really has been disregard for any uh, any sort of safety standards or worker safety. I mean, just think about that. This is our neighbors. Um, they're without, without voices, and uh, other companies are able to figure it out. You know, we have uh, uh, successful companies in Minnesota that, you know, I, I don't want to name all names, but UPS is doing this, and they're, you know, we're not hearing from their workers, and they're making it work. And, they, and they're not having the turnover that we have here. I mean, think about that. I mean, th this, this business has three times the turnover that you see in other businesses, and uh, you know, that's, something's going on. So this is, this is a unique situation. Um, can you imagine that these folks can't ask for help? They're kind of on their own. And, uh, you know, the, can you imagine being afraid to go to the bathroom, you know, in your daily work? I mean, it just, uh, it's pretty darn sad when you think about it. One of my favorite movies is uh, Elf. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but I imagine I get some hands. But uh, remember, an elf, uh, somebody got in trouble because they couldn't meet the standard, right? So what do you do? He got sent to that room, and he had to do that thing where you, like, crank the thing. So that, I think of these poor workers, I know it's, it's a very serious issue, but it's, that's what I think about these people living in fear. Remember how he jumped? That's what these people are, they're scared. You know, that's what I think of... Uh, some of these workers and I, you know, I'm lucky enough to work with a, a major company and we, we do a lot of this heavy lifting stuff every day. And there's, you know, we got to get the planes out. And, but we know the expectations, we know the standards. Um, they're not moving the ball, if you will. Um, there's also training. The training's incredible. And we get annual training. We get, you know, I know it's hard to imagine, but some, tra some employees might need additional training. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's been provided, <laughs> but that's another story. Um, but no, to make sure we work safe, you know, and uh, I'm looking over at uh, Representative Dowdy. He happened to come over to our business and hopped in a plane. I hate to name names, but, you know, it's work. And these, and, uh, but you need to work safe and to have a safe environment. And many companies uh, uh, work to respect that. And uh, it's that, that's just not happening here. And just think how uh, it's just really not, it's not, you wouldn't want your employees or your family to get hurt. Um, it's just a really dangerous situation. So that, think about the long-term thing. And so a lot of these folks, um, we did hear testimony today. Uh, I heard someone say that they're young and many people are getting hurt. But just imagine, it's one thing to sign up for a job and, I really appreciate what Representative uh, Keel was saying because I know there's a lot of dangerous businesses and uh, uh, types of work around the state, and so she's spot on. But this this is different. They're not they're not they're not playing by the ball. They're just uh, are trying to make it successful for the employees, and this really isn't good for Minnesota. This is uh, this is a unique situation, and we need to respect this and try to uh, look out for our uh, for our neighbors. I recognize the member from Candy, Ojai, Representative Baker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, so we're going to keep jumping on businesses and job creators, and, and I think that what concerns me about this bill here as a small business owner myself, I don't 
plan to run a big distribution center or anything like that or a big warehouse, but uh, looking at the definitions, this might mean it means uh, the general warehousing and storage. That sounds like Costco and Sam's Club. Uh, you've got couriers and express delivery service. That sounds like UPS and FedEx. We keep focusing on one business around here, but there are hundreds of businesses in the state of Minnesota. Thank God they've chosen our state to employ people. I am so grateful for that. And the more I listen to this bill today, members, the more I'm, I'm outraged by the com complete lack of discipline from our Department of Labor and Industry, from, from our Minosha, who are supposed to manage the rules that were created in this body years and years ago. So I don't understand why it is we aren't holding those folks more accountable. There's, uh, on every single website for the state agencies, there is a tip line. There's a place to do complaints. There are places to raise your hand on this. I will bet you they have a handbook at Amazon, and they have an employee handbook. So when you start working there, they tell you how many hours you got to work, when you get to take your break, uh, generally some of those kind of guidelines. They will probably tell you um, those kind of things because they have to. They're a big enough company where if they don't, it's complete chaos. Now, I don't know anything about this company, but I know about companies and the huge risks they take by not following safety rules. When they start pushing employees to the brink and if they're not happy, they just, a lot of employees will actually make the decision to not work there anymore. And they have that right to do that. But this bill just seems like it's poorly written, over, over critical of a certain industry that will go on to other industries down the road. And so, you know, I have, it's like you almost want to, say there shouldn't be any work speed data rules. Like, you get to say that I'm working too hard and the employees are going to say, I'm not going to do it that much because you've got to give me 72 hours notice. Um, there's just this language that is not well thought through. And I'm just concerned that this is starting of Dave Baker, you run a hotel, a couple hotels, and your housekeepers are only going to be able to clean this many rooms in an hour because we said so. There's, there's just dynamics and data and everything else that all of a sudden we don't have any criteria to try to set up our standards for what we think is fair because our employees in this company that you're talking about today and every company in Minnesota they're the most important thing we have. Representative Eklund had said, we've got to make sure that every Minnesota worker gets to work safe, works safe, and comes home. I totally agree with that. That is impossible with some of our industries that freak things happen. But I really believe my colleagues in the industry of business, employee protections do everything they can to take care of those amazing employees. So this I just find as just going after something for headlines. And I just, this is not what we should be doing here. You have an agency that has gone after companies hard. And I think that you've got to look at what, what is in those handbooks, what is being told to these employees, and just not continue to just beat up job creators, folks that want to invest in technology, because they will figure out a way to do this. Um, but we also have to find that, that right balance. So uh, this, is a, uh, this is another bad day for business coming off the House floor. Um, and we're just getting started. Thank you. I recognize the member from Washington, Representative Juergens. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, a couple years ago, in the middle of COVID, Minnesota OSHA came into one of the businesses in my district on an anonymous mask violation complaint. And they proceeded to go through that business with a fine-tooth comb. And anything and everything is 
uh, is open to them once they come in the door. And that small business in my district was then fined over $8,000. It seems to me that Dolly, Minnesota OSHA, is taking the easy way out, picking on a small business when maybe they should be paying a little more attention to these large businesses. Now, often in this room, you see back and forth between the, side, the one side of the aisle and the other, and, and you might say something over there and we think, oh, that's just rhetoric, and, and you have those types of, of thoughts. Well, you might have noticed a few minutes ago, I stepped out to make a phone call because I have a friend that used to work at Amazon in the warehouse. And I asked him what it was like. He told me exactly what you're telling me. I believe you. To the workers that are in the gallery today, I believe what those working conditions are. Half of the problem when, when you coming up with a solution is you have to first identify the problem. And I think we can agree that there is a problem there. But I don't know that legislation is the way to solve it. First of all, I think Minnesota OSHA and Dolly, they need to get involved and do their job. There are other companies that, that appear to be doing things right, and they would then fall under this as well. So I don't think I'm going to support this legislation today, but I'll hear the rest of the arguments before I make my decision. But Representative uh, Greenman, I want you to know I believe this issue. I believe it's real. I believe that the conditions for the employees are what they say they are, and I believe that that should be changed and improved upon. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the right solution, the right way to do it, but I believe that there, the conditions at some of these locations need to be better for the, for the people. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recognize the member from Dakota, Representative Berg. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Representative Jurgens, you and I keep aligning on so many issues. Members, we've all heard the old ad adage, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. When workers tell you their stories, believe them. When this bill came before the Labor Committee, we heard the stories of so many workers in the Amazon warehouse, some of whom are here today, and thank you for joining us here in your house. Thank you for having the courage to come forward with your stories. Here's one of them. Kadra Kasim, 31, was three months pregnant when she went to work for Amazon in 2017. After lifting a heavy box in the summer heat, she grew faint and fell down. She was bleeding and fearing a miscarriage, went to Amazon's in-house medical clinic. There, she said staff members said they could not help her and did not offer to call an ambulance for her or her family. She had hoped for at least some compassionate treatment. Ms. Kasim spent several months of unpaid leave on bed rest and gave birth to a healthy baby girl. But those unpaid months crippled her financially. I have traveled twice to Colombia, once to Honduras and Cuba, specifically to study and to listen to the stories of workers in some of the most impoverished and most dangerous places in those countries. I was admittedly naively surprised to hear similar stories right here in our committees in the wealthiest nation in the world. Is this really who we are? We just finished opening this session by pledging allegiance to our flag, and we said, with liberty and justice for all. Do these workers have liberty? Do they have justice? I'd like to thank Representative Greenman for authoring this bill. And members, when you vote on this bill today, the workers in your districts will see who you are, and they will believe you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I recognize the member from Hennepin, Representative Noor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. As they say, a safe workplace is a sound business. And for those who are the job providers that we keep on talking about, they are really nothing without having the workers. No business can survive 
with workers who are going to deliver for them. If we don't value those who are creating the wealth for the job providers, then you value nothing. Members, it's important that we prevent workplace injuries, illnesses, even death. You see, it creates more financial hardships, not only for the worker, but also for the employers. Protecting every employee is a paramount duty that we can do. And for all of us to tell the workers who are here, Hakba Ledihin, Hakka Ledihin Marat Intan Meshujugnu, the Galka Nigal Namarati and Wa Wa Marati Nidalamena, Ha Wakarna, Sisi Puede, yes we can. And for you, we shall fight to make sure that your safety and your progress so that you don't only survive, but you can thrive in any job that you want. And I ask all members to show that as Minnesotans, we care about every worker, every employee, every business. It's not one or the other. It's not all, it's and. So let's show the support for the workers and make sure that Minnesota is here to make sure every employer receives the best employees and everyone is included in the economy so that we can all thrive. Thank you so much. I recognize the member from Hennepin, the author of the bill, Representative Greenman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and, and thank you, members, for the debate. I just want to ground us and remind us what this bill does. What this bill does is say that if you're going to have a quota or a performance standard, you have to tell your workers what it is before you can discipline them for it. That's all it does. It says if you track data, that performance data, you have to give workers access to that information. That's all it does. It's not difficult. And why we're hearing about Amazon is many big warehouse companies already do it. So complying with this law will not be hard for them. But when we hear from workers what's happening, and we hear from them, and I really appreciate Representative Jurgens, you listening and, and, and you reaching out, because what I heard was one of the reasons they're getting hurt is that they are constantly in this opaque state, that the, the quotas are changing constantly. Their algorithm's coming from Seattle. And they don't know, so they just keep rushing and rushing and rushing for fear of getting disciplined. So having access to this information, knowing how many boxes they're expected to, to store or to ship, knowing that they are, have access to their own data, that's really important for them to keep themselves safe. That's why this, this, this bill focuses on what it does, because of what workers said that they needed, information. And when we see problems, we heard about uh, uh, our OSHA standards as they are. And a lot of those uh, standards came from things like this, which is industries changed. We have a safe, safe patient handling standard. In 2007, we passed it because people were getting hurt in hospitals. And so we passed a standard that said uh, uh, what, it what, re what it required, and now it's enforced. That's what this does. It sees an innovation, a uh, 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 high-tech industry that's changing, and it, and it responds to that. Representative Keel, I appreciate uh, your story. And, and one, I did some checking, and actually agricultural storage houses are not, do not, are not in the NAICS code that, that this applies to. It's about 60 distribution centers. But from your conversation, I think if we see a problem that is hurting workers, we should ask questions and we should say, do we need standards that is keeping up with those uh, worker safeties? This isn't just about one business. It's about the management practices of a, the business that is the richest, most powerful business in the world, in, in America. And so when, when it, well, as we all know, whether it comes to how they run their business, whether it comes to shipping, whether it comes to retailing, when Amazon does stuff, it tends to spread. 
When Amazon does stuff, it tends to affect Main Street. When Amazon does stuff, it tends to affect workers. So when we're talking about Amazon today, it's because they're not just some one-off company. They're a company that has been here since 2016 and is growing their footprint. And we need to say, and it's our job to say, that one, we're gonna keep this Amazon, Amazon warehouse workers safe. We're gonna ensure that you have access to the data you need to keep yourself safe. And we're gonna ensure that this practice doesn't spread to other companies. The last thing I'd say is it takes a lot of courage to, cut, to speak out as a worker, any worker, but particularly to speak out as a worker when you work for one of the richest, most powerful companies in the world. And I would just ask that we have the same courage here today. This is a straightforward, relatively rel small bill. This is about ensuring that workers know what quotas they're being uh, held to and that they have access to their own data. So I'd ask that we all have that courage to vote with those workers and what they need. And the last thing I will say is um, I want to leave you with the words of a worker that we heard in the Labor Committee. Um, who said, Ricky Schreiner said, eloquently reminded us that the success of any business or society for that matter directly correlates with the livelihoods, the health, and the happiness of its people. She urged that it's time for Amazon and other companies like it to treat its employees like they should be treated with respect, dignity, and the foundation of our success. And I would just add, it's time for the state to act by passing this straightforward worker safety provision to ensure that workers have the information they need to keep themselves and their coworkers safe. Thank you, members. I'd ask for your vote. There being no further discussion, the clerk will take the roll. Will the clerk please call the names of members who have not yet voted? Hamilton. Hamilton votes no. Hamilton no. Hassan. Hassan votes yes. Hassan I. Houseman. Houseman I. Houseman I. Lucero. Lucero no. Lucero no. Pearson. Pier no. Pearson no. Sandell. Aye. Sandell, aye. The clerk will close the roll. There being 72 ayes and 60 nays, the bill is passed and its title agreed to.